Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to look at some splash symbols, continuing this series on helping you choose symbols. So uh, these two are two of my favorite splashes. We have a Pisces uh, traditional 10-inch splash here, and this is from the early 2000s. And then we have a really cool symbol, uh, a 13-inch Sabian El Sabor sort of Latin symbol. I showed you this when I did my El Sabor symbol video. It's one of my favorite splashes. It's just so responsive and it's actually louder than most splashes. So this is kind of a hybrid splash crash, but I do use it as a splash symbol. So you might say, what is a splash symbol? Well, it's what it sounds like. So in the old days, the uh, Dixieland era, when you heard drummers doing might have heard some of that ticky-tack kind of stuff, woodblocks, cowbells, I don't have that stuff here today, but uh, splash symbols, these little symbols, were a huge part of that. What you want to look for in a splash, first of all, is a very thin symbol that you can bend. That's important. That gives it away, that bendability. Then you need to be able to choke it, because that's very important. And same with this. And this again will be the heaviest one we use today pretty much. Uh, also you're looking for tone, so no weird overtones, just a really quick attack and then it just disappears. Now I love this Piesty because it's got a really pure, unannoying, dark kind of sound. Same uh, with this Sabian even though that's more like a small crash cymbal. So you just heard these two. Let's put a couple others up there. So this is a very strange one. This is a really old A, and it's kind of bent up on the side. So you'll see this. I thought this might have been, when I found it, I was at um, a garage sale. I thought it might have been a, a hi-hat cymbal. But it's not, because it bends up, so. So that's a great example of a really crappy symbol. Uh, it's, it's not, I would call it a splash symbol because it's, it's 12 inches, but it's a little too heavy. And again, I thought it was a hi-hat, but it doesn't work as a hi-hat because the edges are bent up. So. So that's what you don't want. Uh, that's why I took it out today. So it's too thick. Uh, it's not too big. You know, I have some others that sound really good. Uh, but it's got a really crappy low-end tone. Sorry I'm, I keep using that word, but that's the only way I can describe it accurately. And uh, this symbol is only an inch smaller, two inches, sorry, and we'll show you the difference. So there's barely any sound to it. So that's exactly what you don't want to get. But it's bendable and all that. It's just a bad sounding symbol. But it is an old A. Probably from the 50s, I would think. All right, let's play some of these others before we get to the really old stuff. So uh, I found this symbol at a pawn shop. It was a broken Peisty 602. These were great splash symbols. This is a paper thin 12. So if you find one of these, they're going to all be really good. I, they pretty much all sound the same. Even that it's cracked, I got it for 10 bucks because it was cracked. So I bought it, figured I'd use it a few times. I've been using it forever. I just got to stay away from that crack because you cut your hand. But So to me, these old 602 uh, splashes are some of the best ones. It's a blue label, but it is an older one that you can get. It's, it's great. 
So uh, that's a really, really good splash. Of course, you see what happens if you hit it too hard. Someone did that, obviously, and they broke it. Once again, just like my crash symbol video, glancing blows. I would definitely recommend these, okay? They are a little expensive. Then we have this 12-inch Remix. They call it a Crash. I call it a Splash. Uh, it's from the Remix series, Zildjian, that they had out several years ago. I think now they're called the Uptown uh, Symbols. So here's this one. Again, that's a deep sound, but it's nice. It's way different than this. That's more of a functional symbol, so. And uh, it really chokes nicely. So I use this one all the time if I need a louder sound. But again, very, very bendable, very thin. Uh, we do have this Wuhan kind of splash effect. So I don't use this much at all, but it's kind of neat sounding. Very much gong-like. Uh, sometimes I mount this on top of my ride cymbal with a little extension, and I play it like that uh, just for fun but not really a splash symbol, okay? All right, so let's get to the fun stuff now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you uh, two, uh, the smallest cra uh, splash I use is an eight inch splash. This is a Peisty signature, and these are great, but it's a little too small. You'll see it wanting to ride up here because I don't have the, uh, the wing nut on, okay? Uh, but it's effective. Not my first choice though. Sometimes I'll use both of these together. But I do prefer a 10 inch version over this eight. And the other one I did want to show you was the A splashes from the 80s. So. These can be nice if they're thin enough, but they tend to be much darker. So if you want a dark splash, this is your guy. So not, again, it's a little too dark for me. I'd rather use something like this which has more of a full range sound. Okay, so now the funky symbols, the old ones. So this one uh, is called a, a Stenopel. <laughs> I don't know who made it. It's got a really weird label. I'll try to take a picture of it and put it in the video. It's the thinnest symbol I have. This thing is like a paper plate and it's funky as hell, so. Love this thing and I use this all the time and this is a really 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 old symbol it's probably from the 1940s I would think uh, not seeing anything like this made today it's all over the place like again like a paper plate the thinnest thing that's that old sound you know so all right so if you could find one sometimes you'll see them some of these uh, vintage drum places will have these, they'll pick them up with the old old uh, Radio King kits and, and things like that, so duplex kits, so this is a great symbol. 
Uh, we have a few more of these. Uh, this one probably came off of a maybe a toy drum set. And it's got a label, but I can't make it out. So it is stamped. Now, this is one of those ones that don't, that the hole is too small for a modern cymbal stand. And I'm not sure it will fit anywhere. This one's a little small. Nope. So we'll take it easy on this one. But, uh, you know, if I wanted to use it with anything modern, I'd have to drill it out, which I really don't want to do. So see if it flies off. It's a really good sounding cymbal, though. Another really old one, probably from the 30s or the 40s. Okay, back then the... Uh, the uh, cymbal stems were much smaller, just like the hi-hats and the old Ks. You have to drill them out if you want to use them on a modern stand. So that's that. And then we have, finally, the last one, and it's very much similar. I have three of these. They all sound a little different. Uh, this one is also too big for this stem. But And these sound good together. I've used them together. I hope this helps with, um, with you choosing a splash symbol. Again, my favorite is a 10-inch thin version, and the best ones are, uh, if they're not cracked, unfortunately, I think I'm going to buy one of these that's not cracked, but I got it for almost nothing, so it was worth it. And you always want to use these wing nuts on here, because what will happen, it'll just fly right off of there. And we'll stick these up here. But both these symbols really sound good. I think the Pisces, especially the traditionals and the old 602s, are pretty much the best all-round splashes. Uh, this is a 12. This is a 10. So thanks, and we'll see you next time.